So today we're going to talk about volume, and we're going to talk about a specific method of finding the volume of what we call solids of revolution. Um, so if you picture, we've got some mystery function here, and what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this cross section here around the x-axis. So it's going to form a solid that looks like this. Uh, this is a, called a solid of revolution because we're evolving something around um, an axis. Uh, so what we're going to do is find the volume. Okay, so the volume, if we were to take a cross section here, we're going to have this little disc. Okay, the cross section is going to look like a circle. And it's going to have, if you picture, we have a whole bunch of these discs next to each other. Well, what we want is for the, the height of those discs to come infinitely small. So that's where we use our integrals. Um, so the we have a cylinder, not a cylinder, yeah, a cylinder. it's a disc. Um, so we're gonna have the integral here from A to B of, so that will go from all the discs from here to here. It's gonna be pi r squared times the height of the disc, which in this case is gonna be delta x. So for our purposes, we're going to use dx to represent that. So this is now going to be the integral from a to b of pi. The radius of the circle is going to be whatever the y value is here. So it's going to be whatever f of x is. We're going to square that. And then the height is going to be represented by dx. So let's say instead of revolving it around the x-axis, we revolve something around the y-axis. Uh, so again, we're taking this thing, we're rotating it around, we get this bowl shape. Um, so the disks are now going to be going up the y-axis. So this is going to be the integral, in this case from c to d, of pi r squared, so pi the radius in this case is going to be whatever the x value is, and the x is going to be a function of y. So in this case, it's going to be g of y squared dy. Next is if we have two different functions. So this cross-section area here is just kind of floating in space. So if we revolve it around the x-axis, we're going to end up with a cylinder that's got a, a hole in it. Um, the cross section, if you picture here, is going to look like um, a washer. Okay, so it's got an outside and an inside. So we're going to do the integral from A to B. And it's just going to be the outside circle minus the inside circle. So the outside circle is going to be pi, the radius of the outside circle here is going to be f of x minus the inside, which is g of x in this case, squared dx. So we have the outside circle minus the inside circle. You can factor the pi out. Um, in fact, you can do that in any of these. You can pull the pi out of the integral. Um, and as we do more of those, that's probably where we'll start. Okay. So we're going to find the volume of a solid, a revolution, generated um, by revolving y equals x, 0 is less than x is less than 1, around the x-axis. We're going to start by drawing a picture. So we have the line, just y equals x, from 0 to 1. So I've got my line here. So this region here is what we're going to be rotating around the x-axis. So if I were to rotate that around this way, so we're going around here, you're going to end up with a cone is what this is going to end up looking like. And I know sometimes it's hard to picture the, um, the 
three-dimensional shape there, but if you were to rotate that around, you're going to end up with a cone. So my cross-section here, um, and in your homework it's going to say label a cross-section. We're just looking at if I pick a representative point there. So this one is going to be the integral from, in this case, 0 to 1 of pi r squared dx. So pi, my radius in this case, this is the line y equals x, is just going to be the y value, which will equal the x value. So pi r squared dx. Now in your homework, all you're going to have to do is just type these in our calculator, because our interest is, can you set this up? Um, but we'll do these first couple um, by hand. So this is going to be pi. The integral of x squared is going to be 1 third x cubed. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So this is going to be pi times 1 third times 1 cubed minus 0 cubed. So this is just going to be 1. So this volume is going to be pi over 3. Now we're going to do the same thing around the y-axis. Again, I'm going to draw a picture. So we have y equals x here. And this time we're going from 0 to 1 in the y. Okay, so this says from 0 is less than y is less than x. So my area is still this one but we're rotating it around the y-axis this time. So if I were to rotate it around here, we're gonna end up with another cone. And this one um, should make sense that this is actually gonna be the same volume, uh, but we'll go ahead and set this up anyway. This is gonna be the integral from zero to one of pi times, my cross sections are this way. So what I want is the x value in terms of y, which in this case is just y dy. So this will be pi times 1 third x cubed again, which since it's the same, we can go ahead and just say that is also going to be pi over 3. Now that just happens to be because this is a line and this area is equal to this area. We're going to start looking at different functions um, where that will change. Okay, now essentially we're going to do the same thing here, but rather than the line y equals x, we're going to have y equals x squared. So again, we're going to start with the picture. Okay, so we're going to have y equals x squared, which is going to be a parabola, so it's going to look like this, and we're going to go from 0 to 1. So we have this shape, and we're going to be revolving this around the x-axis. So we're looking at kind of this Hershey Kiss looking shape. Okay, it's going to be kind of con concave there. So my sample, we're looking at a cross-section about here. So this is going to be the integral going from 0 to 1. Pi, the y value here, is going to be whatever x squared is. So this is going to be pi x squared squared dx. I'm going to pull that pi out, and then we're going to have to simplify our integral before we solve it. So this will be x to the fourth dx. So this will be pi times 1 fifth x to the fifth, evaluated from 0 to 1. So that's going to be pi over 5. And then if I plug in 1, 1 to the 5th is 1 minus 0. OK, we're going to do a similar thing around the y-axis now. So we have the same graph except for this time we're going from 0 to 1 in the y direction. So rotating this around the y-axis. 
So if you picture it, this one looks like a Hershey kiss. This one is gonna look like a bowl. So we're going the integral. So we've got our disks going up the y-axis now. So this is from zero to one of pi r squared. The radius is gonna be whatever the x value is depending on the y. So if y equals x squared, x is gonna be the square root of whatever the y value is. So we're gonna have the square root of y squared dy. So this will be pi times the integral from zero to one of just y. So that'll be one half y squared evaluated from zero to one, which is just gonna be one minus zero. So this is pi over two. This next one's gonna basically combine those. So we have both y equals x and the x squared, and we're gonna revolve it around the x-axis, and then we're gonna revolve it around the y-axis. So let's draw our picture. So we're gonna have the straight line, y equals x, and then we're gonna have the parabola that's gonna fall above it and then cross right there. So when we revolve this, we're going to get kind of an odd shape. It's going to be flat on the outside, and then it's going to have this kind of curved inside. So when you do anything like this, it's going to be the outside circle minus the inside circle. So revolving it around here. So if I took a cross section, we'd have an outside big circle and an inside circle. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the outside circle, which will be pi the radius, this is y equals x, so it's gonna be y equals x squared, pi r squared, minus the inside circle, which is gonna be pi, its radius is gonna be x squared, squared, dx. So outside circle, pi r squared, inside circle, pi r squared. I can factor the pi out and then simplify, so zero to one of x squared minus x to the fourth dx. So this is gonna be pi times one half x cubed minus, sorry, one third x cubed minus one fifth x to the fifth evaluated from zero to one. Uh, so when I plug in one, we're just gonna get one third minus one fifth here. And then if I plug in zero, we get zero. So one third minus one fifth, this would be five fifteenths minus three fifteenths, which gives me two fifteenths. So two pi over 15. This one, we're gonna do the same thing but revolve it around the y-axis. So we've got y equals x, y equals x squared. So the cross-section is gonna look the same, but when we rotate this one around the y-axis, the curved part is gonna be on the outside and then the, the flat part is gonna be on the inside. So this is gonna have a different volume. It's got a different shape. The cross sections here, if we were to slice along here, um, are again going to be those washers uh, where the outside circle is going to come from this equation and the inside circle is going to come from this equation. So this is going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the outside circle pi. We want the x value in terms of y. So this is going to be x equals the square root of y. squared minus the inside circle, which is going to be pi y squared dy. And we do our math. So pi, the integral from 0 to 1, square root of y squared is y. And just simple power rule. 
So we have 1 half y squared minus 1 third y cubed evaluated from 0 to 1. So again, this is going to be 1 and 1 here. So we have 1 half minus 1 third. This will be 3 sixths minus 2 sixths is 1 sixth or pi over 6. All right, we're going to rotate the region bound by 2 minus x squared, the line y equals 1, and the line around the line y equals 1. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the line y equals 1, which is just going to be a horizontal line here at 1. If I were to do 2 minus x squared, that's going to be a parabola that's moved up 2 but then it's opening down. So we'd go over one and down one here, over one and down one here. And so we're gonna have a parabola that looks like that. So our area that we're rotating is gonna be this, and we're rotating it around the line y equals one. Okay, so we're gonna end up with this kind of football looking shape. So this is going to be the integral. Our cross section here is going to be that distance. So we're going to have the integral from negative 1 to 1, because this intersection here is at negative 1. This intersection here is 1, of pi. The radius here is going to be this minus this. So it's going to be 2 minus x squared minus 1 squared. Okay, a trick I like to use, if we have something symmetric like this, rather than going from negative one to one, I'm gonna go from zero to one and double it because plugging in zero tends to be a lot easier than, well, anything else. So I'm now gonna have two, I'm gonna pull the pi out, times the integral from zero to one. When I simplify this, we're gonna have one minus x squared dx, not squared. Okay, so I'm going to have to FOIL this out before we integrate. So this is going to be 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. Okay, then we'll just integrate using the power rule. So this will be 2 pi. We're going to have x minus two-thirds x cubed plus one-fifth x to the fifth evaluated from one to zero. So this will be one minus two-thirds plus one-fifth. Uh, we get a common denominator of 15. So we'd have 15 fifths minus 10 fifths plus three-fifths gives me uh, eight-fifths times two is 16 pi over two. So our next one, we're gonna find the volume of a solid found by revolving the region bound by y equals x squared, x equals four around the line, x equals six. So let's draw our graph. Okay, so we have the y equals x squared. Um, we have a vertical line at four, at x equals four, and then the parabola here. So I'm just gonna say this is 16, and just kinda pretend. So we have this area. And we're revolving it around the line x equals 6. Okay, so this whole thing is going to go around here. My cross section is going to look like this. So this we just need to do some thinking. And I'm not going to say there's a steady rule. Um, you just have to think about 
how do we get what we need to get out of this problem? Okay, so our, we're rotating it around here. So we're gonna have the integral from zero to four. Sorry, uh, tomorrow we'll have a method of going from this direction. We're doing washers, so we're going up this way. So my, my circles, my disks are going up this way. So I'm actually going from zero to 16 and we want pi r squared minus pi r squared. So the outside radius is gonna depend on how far up we are. So if x is equal, or if y equals x squared, then my x value is gonna equal the square root of y. But here's the thing, that distance, the square root of y, is this. Okay, for any given y, this distance is going to be the square root of that. For example, this value here is 4 because it's the square root of 16. Okay, but I don't want this, I want this. So if we know this distance is the square root of y, this distance is going to be sorry, we want this distance. If this distance is the square root of y, this distance, which is going to be the outside radius, is going to be 6 minus the square root of y. So that's my outside radius. Minus my inside radius. So my inside radius is going to be this distance here which is just going to be 2. Okay, so you're just thinking through the problem. We want this distance minus this distance and just figuring out how to get that. Um, tomorrow uh, we'll have a different method called shells where our cross sections would go this direction, um, but that's for tomorrow. Uh, this, you can just dump this in your calculator, like I said, for your homework, that's all you're going to do. And we get that volume. Okay, our last one, we're going to prove that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So, let's draw a graph. So if we're going to generate a sphere, our cross section is going to be a circle. If I rotate this semicircle around this axis, then we're going to end up with a sphere. So the equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So we're revolving this around here. That would make this negative r. That would make this positive r. This would be r. So uh, we're going to have, I'm going to just double the integral from 0 to r. So this is going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to r of pi r squared. I'm just going to call this dx. OK, well, the different radiuses, radius let me, 0 to r pi. As we move through this, we're going to have different heights, and that height is going to depend on this equation here. So if I solve for y, which is our height, that's going to be the square root of r squared minus x squared. So my radius is going to be the square root of r squared minus x squared squared. Okay, pi r squared. My radius is going to vary as we go from 0 to r. So this is going to be 2 times the integral from 0 to r of pi r squared minus x squared. Because when we square root squared. Right, so we have 2 pi. r is just a value. So this is going to be r squared x 
minus one third x cubed evaluated from zero to r. So let's go through this. So two pi r squared times r minus one third r cubed. And then if I plug in zero, both of those terms go away. So we have two pi, we have r cubed minus r cubed over three. So one r cubed minus one third r cubed is gonna be two thirds r cubed, which when we simplify this here, we're gonna have two pi times two thirds, which would be four pi over three r cubed. So we have proven that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, so that is volume using the disk and washer method.